Philadelphia's connections to national events. I'm Jill Horner. This is Comcast Newsmakers. With me is Wynne Alexander. She's executive director of WDASHistory.org. Thanks so much for being with us. Great to see you. Always a pleasure. We were talking about national events, particularly those during the civil rights era and their connections to Philadelphia. And during Black History Month, your organization is doing a variety of different things on your website. You actually have a redesign of the site. People can visit, learn more about the history of the station, learn more about the history that it played in civil rights. But today we're talking about a, a particular instance, and that is Philadelphia and the foiling of an assassination plot of Malcolm X. We know about the assassination of Malcolm X, but there was an attempt on his life right here in Philadelphia. And very in close proximity to when he was murdered in New York, uh, December 29th. He was due for what I believe is the ninth time on Joe Rainey's listening post show on WDAS. So Malcolm would arrive at 10 o'clock that night, but it was a little unusual from his other visits. According to, police, to newspaper reports, there were 75 to 100 policemen in the area, uniformed, plain closed, 14 to 16 dogs, had been combing the woods around WDAS because there was a, two solid leads, one from the FBI, saying that Malcolm was going to be assassinated at the station that night. Joe Rainey, an amazing journalist and radio executive and leader and pioneer, Joe Rainey had also been beaten up not too long before that by a so-called fringe Muslim group and according to Jet Magazine, knocked 15 feet across the studio. I think that the folks in Chicago, which was the home office of the uh, Muslim organization, I think they didn't like the fact that Joe Rainey was too friendly with Malcolm and having him on the air too much. Now Malcolm has come back from Mecca. He knows the truth about Islam. He knows what he has to do in terms of becoming an even more enlightened brilliant, brilliant leader that he was. And so this radio show is very important. I assure you that when the manager of WDAS heard that there was going to be a hit, his first inclination would to be cancel the show. But yet it went on. Yet the station went through with it. The host went through with it. Malcolm X went through with it. Why did they continue even under threat of potential death, even under the, uh, light of the fact that they had to be surrounded by so much protection? You're going to see when they put up the uh, shot, the police who were in uniform are out there in force with pump action shotguns. This was no, oh, there were sharpshooters on the roof. There were sharpshooters in the bushes. All of the corridors at the station were lined with police personnel. You could barely get into the studio. It, the show went on because Joe Rainey knew Malcolm needed this show. Malcolm had split with the Nation of Islam. They were calling for his removal in many bad ways. And he needed all of the publicity that he could get because he had formed two new organizations, the uh, Organization of Afro-American Unity and also uh, uh, a second organization. He needed to have members and he needed for his mission to continue because it was so important. And when we just have a, a few seconds left, but this is just part of the role that WDAS has played in American history, in black history, and you are also working on a documentary about the role of WDAS in the civil rights movement. And people can visit your website for more information about all of this. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. We've been talking with Wynne Alexander. She's executive director of WDAShistory.org. I'm Jill Horner.